Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as I'll discuss building foam board RC airplanes A to Z. Let's get to it. Let's take a quick look at some of the foam board airplanes I've built over the past couple of years. Beautiful, man. Those foam board airplanes you just saw, they were all my original designs. They're available in the description. I've clicked it on the videos if you want to see how to build it and for plans. Uh, the only exception is the F-22 that came from uh, somebody else's plans. Foam board is a affordable and easy avail easily available product that can be used to build a wide range of RC model aircraft. In this video, I want to go through some uh, specific details about how you can use foam board to create your own model airplane designs. The first thing you'll need to do is find the, the foam board itself. It's available at a wide range of arts and craft stores like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I've had pretty good luck with Amazon with Royal and Langnickel foam board sheets. They come in 20 inch by 30 inch sheets and they're 3 16 um, inch thick with a white paper covering. The white paper covering on the foam board that I use does add some weight, but I found it, uh, it's very, it accepts paint, acrylic paint very well. The model comes out very nice with the paint. Also, if you decide to peel off the paint, uh, if you peel it off on one side, the foam will warp a little bit. If you peel it off both sides, it is a little bit lighter, but there's a lot of hanger rash and neck with the foam with that paper being taken off. So therefore, I tend to build models that are a little bit larger. About 30 inch wingspan seems to be a good working uh, smallish size for my models to keep the paper on there and have enough wing area and surface to properly fly the model. You can use a wide range of glues for the foam board. Uh, the most popular for sure is using a hot glue gun. Hot glue guns can be purchased at Amazon or anywhere. You get the gun, you plug it in, you put in a glue stick. There's a heating element that literally melts the glue. You pull the trigger and a bead of hot glue comes out onto the surface. When two foam boards go together with a hot glue, it glues almost instantly and it's a good bond for, for um, surfaces on your airplane, formers into fuselages and so forth. For some of the higher stress joints, I'm thinking a firewall or a landing gear attachment point. I use a five minute epoxy to attach that. And typically for the firewall and landing gear plates, there'll be some sort of 1 16th or 1 8th inch plywood. The foam board, the 3 6 inch inch foam board I use is super easy to cut. I use just the standard number 11 X-Acto blade, although any sharp blade cutter can be used it. Often I'll draw the outline directly onto the paper of the foam board and I just cut that outline with the number 11 blade or the, or the sharp cutter to the shape that I wish to, to have for the airplane. Wings can be very easy to make with a foam board. I have a complete video on this on how to make a foam board wing in 10 minutes. Essentially what you do is you take a piece of foam board 
the cord of the wing times two. So if you have an eight inch cord, it's 16 inches wide. And the idea is you simply fold the foam board over itself. And for the spar, I take two pieces of foam board about an inch thick, glue them uh, about an inch back from the wing leading edge inside the wing. And when you fold it over, you glue it to the top of the spar, you glue it to the trailing edge, and it's a very strong, convincing wing. It's a, close to an airfoil shape as it goes across that. And you can, um, you, you've got a wing done in 10 minutes. I have built airplanes like my Bronco where I just keep it a 30 inch wingspan. That is the width of the foam board. If I want larger wingspans, like for example, my twin, which is a 44 inch wingspan, I just do two of those, glue them together, being sure to use dihedral braces made from 1 16th inch plywood in front of and in back of the spars held in place with um, five minute epoxy and drywall tape on the joint reinforces five minute epoxy. But again, look at the video and you'll see how to very quickly build a uh, nice wing out of foam board. To keep things simple in these foam board models, I typically use um, wood dowels in the fuselage and rubber bands to hold the wing on. Although it's no problem if you want to use nylon bolts to keep the um, foam board wing in place, you'll just have to have a plywood plate in the fuselage to screw the bolts into. Building from foam board offers a lot of flexibility to the aircraft designer. Uh, I have made several models that are a lot of fun to fly that are profile fuselages. In other words, they're not, they don't have formers inside. I recommend, or what I have done, is two of the pieces of foam board together, the 3 16 inch foam board. With the length of the fuselage and just the foam board, it can get a little bit wiggly for the tail surfaces. I would recommend putting a um, sheet of 1 16 inch plywood between the two uh, fuselage sides of foam board, glue all that together with either hot glue or 5 minute epoxy, and you have a nice strong fuselage. It's kind of fun to fly a profile RC model. All your equipment, Ooh. servos, receivers, batteries, of course, are outside of the fuselage or in the wing uh, space for this, for this type of model. One of the things I've learned is I've designed a number of model air, RC model aircraft, both balsa and foam board. They just, they tend to come out tail heavy. There's just structure on the tail. The tail's a little bit further back. So what I do with the foam board, I anticipate that it could, the model could come out a little bit tail heavy. I'll try to eliminate some structure like the bottom of the fuselage from the wing trailing edge to back. I just leave that open to save a little bit of weight. Another technique to counter that is I will typically add, say, an inch to the length of the nose to make a little bit longer nose. That way the engine is further forward from the center of gravity. You'll do two things. That being a little bit further forward will help balance it um, with, the, with the weight in the front. And if you do have to add weight, I typically use lead fishing weights. There's a little bit more room in the front to give more uh, moment arm to um, balance out the model if it comes out tail heavy. For the smaller RC models, for the tail surfaces, I just use a 3 16, 3 16 inch foam board with the paper on the top and bottom for the uh, vertical and horizontal tail surfaces. It seems to work out okay. There's not it, it, no structural strength back there. They make a light and easy to make uh, tail surface for your RC model aircraft. On the other hand, for control surfaces, you do need to be careful. Um, I have, it's been my experience when I make, for example, strip ailerons, a long aileron, say 20, 25 inches, an inch thick. No matter what you do, that aileron is going to bend, it's going to warp a little bit. The foam just doesn't have enough strength of that narrow size and length to, to have any rigidity. So for strip ailerons, I use balsa for sure. I have uh, had good luck with the rudders and elevators. If the rudders and elevator surfaces are at least an inch or more, but they're not too long, they seem to um, be strong enough and to hold the shape for that function. I think these foam board models should be flown with electric engines. I'm not sure I've seen any gas powered foam board models. Somebody somewhere might have done one. With the gas motors, they're heavy, there's a lot of vibration, but more importantly, there's um, oil residue from the exhaust. And the foam board model's just not going to hold up well to that vibration, that weight. And more importantly, the oil over time is just going to get into the foam board and it's, it's not going to work out well. So I stick with electric motors for all of my foam board models. I mentioned before, talking about the wings, it's best to use balsa for your strip ailerons because the foam board will warp. There are two other areas where foam board is really not strong enough for the model, and that's the firewall where the, where the uh, motor attaches to the fuselage and the um, plate where any landing gear is attached, whether it's uh, sheet metal or the wire. You're just going to have to use plywood for your firewalls. Um, 
probably one eighth is about the minimum size. I would recommend not using screws. I have used screws in the past to quickly put on a motor. They come loose eventually and the motor just gets loose. Go ahead and take the time to put in a bolt and a blind nut to keep everything uh, attached to the fuselage. When you glue the um, firewall in place, five minute epoxy for sure. I usually use some reinforcement like popsicle sticks on either side of the, fuse of the uh, firewall on the fuselage sides to keep everything firmly in place. Same goes for the landing gear attachment point. Just use uh, plywood and you can attach your landing gear directly to that strong plywood plate. You can certainly use any sort of hinge you used on balsa bottles for your control surfaces. The Dubro nylon hinges are fine. Um, I have also had good luck on the foam board, especially the smaller models of just using clear scotch tape. I put the scotch tape on the top of the surface. The clear tape literally disappears when you apply it to the control surface and it's strong enough uh, for smaller models to fly um, properly. I use tape um, on my Bronco and it's worked out just fine. Speaking of landing gear, because oftentimes I'm trying to do a quick prototype of a foam board just to see how the overall design concept flies, the majority of my foam board models, I, I just don't have landing gear. Uh, they're small enough, they safely hand launch, they fly at a, at a slow enough airspeed, and they look kind of nice in the air with the um, retracted gear look in the air. You're just going to land on the belly. If you can land on grass, that's fine. Maybe some uh, popsicle sticks or plywood reinforcing for scuffing on the bottom of the fuselage. But it is a consideration to make some of your smaller foam board models simply without landing gear. There are a range of different covering techniques you can, you can use on your model uh, made out of foam board. The first one is to do nothing. You can fly it just the way it is with a paper covering, and that, that could work out fine. I have oftentimes had just no paint at all. I put on some decals that I've made to give it a little bit of a, of a unique appearance, and that is fine. Acrylic poster paints are ideal for the foam board. They're cheap, they're easily available, uh, they're odor-free, and they clean up with water. It's very easy to paint on the colors. You can do a wide range of colors. I use that for the Bronco and the F-22, and I think the colors came out very good just using the poster paints. They just dry in place. Because there's no fuel residue, there's nothing you have to do to fuel-proof the acrylic paint on these models. I have also had good luck with iron-on coverings. Now, there's two types of iron-on coverings. You've got the regular standard monocoat and other brands similar to that. The monocoat is a revolutionary covering. It changed the hobby when it first came out in the 1980s. But it's very strong, it can be fairly heavy, but more importantly, it uses a lot of heat to go on, which is fine for your larger models. So what I recommend for the foam board for less heat, less weight, and easier application is any of the light coverings. It could be Aerolite, there's a couple, several brands out there. You'd usually see an L-I-T-E, light, somewhere in the name, which means that it is a less strong covering for the smaller models, but less heat, and it, it goes on pretty well and it, it looks, looks quite nice. I've used that on, on several of my models. Another covering that I've used with, with good success is colored packing tape. It's just fairly, very thin, lightweight, very sticky colored packing tape used for packing boxes. Very easy to find on Amazon or, or other stores, but Amazon has all a range of colors. You simply peel that off and you apply it directly onto the foam. With a little bit of practice, you can get a pretty good um, effect with this colored tape to decorate your model or at least put on some trim. Another line with the tape is this metallic uh, HVAC duct tape. It's a silvery finish. You peel off the back. It's extremely sticky. It's used to seal vents with your heating and cooling system in your house. And again, with a little bit of practice, putting that on very carefully, using a flat surface to uh, rub it down in place. You can get a nice metallic looking finish uh, on your model. I did this with my L15 Scout with Boeing, and I think it came out pretty nice. Adds a little bit of weight, but not too much if you're careful, but a great way to get a metal finish. So again, thank you for tuning in. Foam board is a fun uh, product to build your RC models with. If you get an idea, you can almost within a couple of days get a flying model together. It's affordable. It's very easy to repair if you dig it at the, at the uh, field. And you just have some fun with it, making some unique uh, designs that would be almost too hard to do with balsa with normal building techniques. So again, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Remember, there are legs for all the models you see flying in this video in the description. Thank you. <music>